Hello, Jonathan Wagner here from SolidSimes.com and I'm going to show you how to purify a histagged protein from E. coli. So um, what I have here is I have some E. coli cell lysate. So these are uh, E. coli cells that I sonicated and um, went through a high speed centrifuge step and then I took the soluble components of the cells um, in this tea colored solution here um, and I left the insoluble cell debris behind. Uh, and the other thing I have is I have a mill of nickel agarose. Um, this comes in 20% ethanol so what I've already done is I filled this tube with water and then I spun these beads for five minutes at 5,000 times G and I poured off the extra water. So now they're in water instead of ethanol uh, because I didn't want to get a lot of ethanol mixed together with my cell lysate. Um, and I was careful about choosing how much nickel agarose to use. Um, for one thing, it costs money, um, but for another thing, the more agarose I use, the more contaminants will be in my final purified protein. Uh, and we'll talk more about that later. Uh, but my rule of thumb is that I use at least one mil of nickel agarose and I use one mil more for every 10 milligrams of protein that I expect to have. So if I had, if I was purifying 10 milligrams of protein, I would purify using one mil of nickel agarose. If I had 20 milligrams of protein coming, I would use two mils of nickel agarose. Um, today I'm actually expecting only four milligrams of protein to be present in my lysate, um, so I'm using one mil um, because that's the minimum. So I'll go ahead and add the lysate to the nickel agarose. Cap it and then it's going to mix end over end for 15 minutes. And when it's done, I'll see you back here for the purification part. Okay, so our lysate and nickel agarose have been mixing for about 15 minutes and the histag proteins should be bound to the nickel agarose at this point. So I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna pour it into a BioRad Econo column. So this is a gravity column, um, but we're not gonna be using gravity, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, these are really great for purifying proteins. Um, and I actually have two of them here. I'm gonna purify two proteins in parallel. So what I like to do is take a syringe and a piece of silicon tubing and a cap from the column and pull back the syringe, put the cap on, and then squeeze about 10 mils of air into the econo column. And that immediately forces out um, the liquid. And I'm ready to add wash buffer. So this is Nicol Agro's wash buffer. Um, I'm gonna use a pipette to put it into the column, making sure to run liquid down the sides of the column um, in order to get all that lysate off the sides of the column. Squeeze that through as well. And if you, if you have additional proteins, you can um, wash them in parallel. I have um, another protein here that I'm washing so I do 10 mil washes. Um, it depends on the size of your purification. Um, I have one mil of nickel agarose, so I'm using 10 mils of wash. If you had two mils, or if you had, let's say if you had about five mils of nickel agarose, then you would start using more like 20 mils of um, wash buffer at a time. But I'm doing um, 10 mil washes. 
and I'm gonna repeat them 10 times. And most people are good at washing their nickel agaros, but they don't realize that sometimes there can be large particles of DNA or cell debris or stuff um, in mixed in with your nickel agaros that are not gonna wash through no matter what you do. Um, so what I like to do is take a, a spatula, reach in and physically stir up the nickel agaros um, <clears throat> so that those pieces can be broken up and go through the filter at the bottom of the column. And I, I repeat that physical breakup step about three times during my tin washes. Okay, so. I think we're on wash four. Five. washed and now what I'm gonna do is elute the protein so I have here 10 1.5 mil microfuge tubes they're labeled 1 to 10 um, and I'm going to lower the econo column down until it's right above the tube, turn the stopcock so it's off, and then I'm going to add one mil of elution buffer. So elution buffer is just the same as wash buffer except that it has 250 millimolar uh, imidazole added and it's pH to pH 8. I'm going to add just one mil of elution buffer and what I'm going to do is wait about a minute for the proteins to start unbinding from the nickel agarose, give it a chance to equilibrate, and then I'm going to elute it into my microfuge tube. The first one never has protein in it because the concentration of imidazole isn't high enough, but usually the second one does. So this is going to be the money fraction. Turn the stopcock off. Mix that up a little bit. Give it about a minute. And uh, this is where the, the syringe and um, lid and tube come in really handy because when you're using really small volumes, gravity really isn't enough to pull the buffer through um, the bed and through the filter at the bottom of the column. So it takes forever to elute your protein and you know that forces people to do silly things like use an ACTA FPLC for this kind of um, purification. And, you know, I do love FPLCs, but that's really not necessary. So uh, it's, I think it's been about a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go through. Um, now, I'm gonna make sure not to blow any bubbles into my protein because at this point, we have a high concentration of protein that we're eluding. Um, I don't want to force air into it and make a lot of bubbles because um, that can also denature the protein. Um, so I'm just going to repeat this uh, 10 more times and then I'll meet you over at the Nano Drop to measure the concentration of the protein we eluded. 
Okay, so I eluded 10 one mil fractions from my one mil of nickel agarose. And now I'm going to measure the protein concentration in them using the nanodrop spectrophotometer. Uh, now this is a great instrument because it only uses a couple microliters of sample and because it can read high absorbances. And that's important because we're gonna have a lot of absorbance coming from the nickel agarose dilution buffer because it has 250 millimolar imidazole. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and blank with some of that elution buffer with 250 millimolar imidazole. Blank. And once it's blanked, I'm going to get one of my fractions and measure the protein concentration. And um, keep in mind that the first fractions are gonna have a little bit less imidazole in them because of the buffer that came in from the nickel agarose mixing with the elution buffer. So the concentration of protein in those first two or three fractions is actually gonna be underestimated. Um, but not by too much. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and measure the concentration in all of these fractions. Uh, I've already done that, in fact, and so I know that fraction 3 has 2 mg per mil protein concentration, fraction 10 has 0.4 mg per mil protein, and that tells me that there's actually still a little bit of protein eluding, so I'm going to go back and I'm gonna elute three or four more fractions additionally for my nickel agarose. And then I'm gonna measure them on the nanodrop as well. I'm gonna take the fractions that have a significant amount of protein and combine them for the next purification step, which is anion exchange. And I'm also going to use the concentrations of these fractions so that I know how many microliters of each fraction to load on an SDS page gel to make it look good. Um, so those are the two main purposes of measuring with the nanodrop at this point. Get an estimate of the yield, um, so I know how much I was getting from my bacteria. Um, learn if I need to elute some more fractions from my nickel agarose to make sure I got it all. And so that I know how much to load on a gel. Um, so with that, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll visit us at solidzymes.com or stick around for the next video about anion exchange. And thanks for watching. Bye.